All right, everyone. So what we're going to do uh, is some foundational things first about SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, what we want to do is this. Um, on our computers, we have all the popular web browsers here. Go ahead and open any web browser that you like. And then we'll go over to the, uh, the biggest search engine by market share at the moment, which is Google.com. Open your web browser. Let's go to Google.com. Some of the latest stats show that Google has about 60 to 65 percent global market share. So billions of searches are conducted through Google globally. It's got the largest market share. We'll look at another search engine, second place market share. But this is uh, Google. It's so big and famous. It's become a verb, hasn't it? People say Google it, which they're trying to say search for it online. Before Google, there were other search engines like Yahoo, AltaVista, Ask Jeeves, etc., Dogpile. Um, and there's also search engines that came out after Google. Some have failed, of course, and some are still around, and some of them are niche. But Google is the big one, and Google is one of the ones we'll focus on to optimize so that we, we get found. Now, um, the thing about any search engine optimization is that there's the easy way and the hard way. Raise your hand if you'd like to do it the easy way. Okay, now take that hand and reach into your wallet and take oh, out your God. credit card. Because the easy way to rank well on the search engines is to pay for it. And that is known as pay-per-click. That is to create search engine campaigns. That is to pay to get better ranking than your competitors. So that's the easy way. You just pay X amount of money, depending on your, your website and your needs and your, and your category and so forth and you're number one. But then your competitor pays a little bit more perhaps and now they're number one. So then you pay a little bit more to get back to number one. And then a third party pays even more than you two combined and now they're number one. So pay-per-click and, and paying for ranking and placement is an arms race that everyone is engaged in trying to get higher than, than the rest monetarily. Question? Yeah, that when you pay for play, you show up as an ad on the top, but not an actual, actual result. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Or that's true, and that's that's what I'm getting. Where you wouldn't be number one, but you, you would be above number one, right? You would, and the thing is that there's such a variety of web users out there that, yeah, maybe most of us here are savvy and we're never going to click on those ads. But there are millions of people throughout the world that will see the first thing as number one and click on it. So there are still going to be, even if you yourself and you've never met anyone that clicked on a Google ad, there's going to be millions of people globally that will take the first one as number one and therefore as the best. But that's a very good point. We will be paying, if you pay, to, be, to get placed in the ad sections. And again, you may be a savvy user and never click on the ads, but not everyone's a savvy user like you. You're going to get lots and lots of traffic anyway from these people that are clicking on the ads. So that's the easy way to pay. The hard way is what we're going to engage in in this class, what we do most of the time in my company. The hard way is the organic search, the, the results that appear that are not ads. That's harder to do because we're not paying for that position. We're getting that position because of a, of a variety of factors that we take into account, which we'll learn about in this class. So we're going to engage in organic SEO rather than paid SEO. People sometimes come to the class and say, are we going to learn PPC? Short answer is no. We're going to learn it the hard way. We're going to learn SEO and SEM uh, to rank organically because in the long term, uh, setting up a, a site that has been optimized organically could pay off better because you will get some residual organic result from paying, but that's going to wear off. Maybe that's why previously you had a high-ranking website with some other SEO company, and after you, you know, broke, uh, ended your contract with them, maybe you're not number one anymore, you're number 12, you're number 100. Maybe they were using techniques uh, that got you temporary results, and now you have to deal with organic results. And that's what we'll be talking about in this class. So as an activity here, we're in Google. Let's um, do a search here. I also kind of, it's probably an uphill battle, but I want to I get people 
used to really saying search, search online, rather than just Google it, because Google is not the only search engine out there. And maybe it's an uphill battle. But just like uh, some things have become genericized, like when you say, hand me a Kleenex, technically you should be saying, hand me a facial tissue. Or when you're saying, let's go throw that in the dumpster, technically that is a trash receptacle. But these company brand names have become so synonymous with their product that a Kleenex is a Kleenex. It's not a facial tissue. That a dumpster is a dumpster. It's not a trash receptacle. And so Google, that might get genericized at some point. It's a brand name and it's trademarked and all of that, but we use it so commonly for search. Maybe Google will lose their copyright. Who knows? I'm just trying to say, let's perhaps get used to using search, search online. I'll search, I'll search it online. Because we're also going to look at another big search engine, the number two search engine, and it's not Google. So here under Google, let's search for your name. Search for your name in the way that you are most known or want to be known. So if your name is William Jefferson Clinton III, you're going to look for Bill Clinton. So search for your name as most commonly you are known or wish to be known. <clears throat> we'll get a page of results, of course. This is the search engine results page, the SERP, S-E-R-P. And I did this search and I get 28 and a half million results in half a second. In my particular case, I get a row of pictures at the top. None of these are me. On the right side, there's a call out with a Victor Campos. That's not me. I am not 80 years old. I was not in the movie Scarface. And if we look at some of these results, however, some of them are me. There's my LinkedIn profile, second place. There's also another result here that is me, vmcampos.com slash me. What else? 4.8, uh, rate my professor. Okay, there's my profile over at rate my professors. Uh, what else? There's my profile at Southwestern College. There's my Google Plus page. Victor Campos, Leo Tenor Opera. That's not me. Um, and then there's another item right here. This one is me. Vic VictorCampos.brandyourself.com. So there's 10 results, and it looks like I'm, I'm like 7 or so out of the 10. How many of you found at least one result that was you? I found some money. Some money? You know, the unclaimed property. Oh, the unclaimed property, huh? $45.73. Really? <laughs> you got to claim it before the others claim it under your name. So here I'm doing a Google search for my name, and most of the results that appear for me, uh, for here, are of me. This is showing that I'm on different. I have different web presences. I'm on different websites, not just my own main website. Question? Is there any influence that you're in San, you're in San Diego and you are in San Diego? That's a good question. Now, uh, nowadays, the web browser and the search engine are getting smarter in knowing about a location. A few years ago, they weren't that smart yet. But now it's also taking that into account that you're searching from San Diego to perhaps show a result of a Victor Campos in San Diego. Sometimes I see here Victor Campos, the, the lawyer in, in Brentwood or whatever. Sometimes I see the, the dentist with bad reviews here uh, over in LA or whatever. But that's also something that we need to discuss as time goes on about location and location search. So uh, in my case, I'm getting results because I'm in San Diego and I'm searching from San Diego and I find a Victor Campos in San Diego. So is that a negative if you're in New York and someone's searching trying to find you? It could be a negative and that's why we'll be addressing what do we do to, to really get found by the audience that's, that we want to get found by. <laughs> this may or may not have appeared on yours, but make a note of this. One of the results was victorcampos.brandyourself.com. Make a note of brandyourself.com. This is, a, this is an online reputation management website. There's a few of them out there in this space at the moment, but it seems that Brand Yourself at the moment is the bigger one. There's another one. I think it's called literally reputation.com. I haven't researched it enough to give you a good opinion of it, 
but brandyourself.com, I have researched that. What that is, is a, is a uh, website that if you yourself are an important aspect of your business, it behooves you to have a positive image online because you might be searching here and find <coughs> out, oops, there's that embarrassing photo of myself that is going to make my, me look less professional as a lawyer. Well, brandyourself.com allows you to create a free profile, add the content that represents you, um, mark the content that is not you or negative, and mark the content that is positive in a Google result. And so if you, if you claim your reputation or, or put your best foot forward this way, that could be helpful for you. Again, if you're part of you know, IBM, this might not be as relevant to you. But if you are a freelance web designer trying to get more jobs, and you're part of the face of the company, if you have your best face, your best foot forward, um, that could be helpful. So brandyourself.com. Some of the results that appear here, of course, are ads. Uh, I see that these are clearly labeled at the bottom. We found, uh, we found, find Victor Campos. So, and this is marked as an ad. Just a few years ago, these were not obviously marked as ads. And again, a <laughs> lot of traffic comes from those ads. Even if you've never clicked on them, even if you feel that you'll that you're savvy enough that you'll never click on them, there's still millions of clicks on those ads. And in this particular result, well, the ads are at the bottom, and the person that's really looking for Victor Campos San Diego web designer probably clicked the correct one already, didn't get to the ad. We'll do some other searches to compare and contrast. Notice it's also related, uh, it's also giving me related. Do you mean Victor Campos on the West Wing? Victor Campos the actor? Dr. Victor Campos? DJ Victor Campos? Attorney Victor Campos? What I'm saying here is there's a lot of competition just here for my name. Uh, not to speak of when we get to your business, your online presence, there's a lot of competition. Even if you think you're the only vegan dog walking business in San Diego, there's probably another one or two or ten. In my results here, 28 and a half million results served to me in half a second. So here we've done a Google search. For yourself. Let's compare and contrast this with the second search engine we'll be dealing with, Bing. The Bing search engine. Again, you may never have used Bing or heard of Bing, but I'm going to tell you why you should care in a moment. I'm going to open a completely different web browser. You can do it in a different tab if you want, but I'm just going to go to another web browser. Currently I was in Google Chrome. I'm going to go to Internet Explorer. doesn't matter at this point, but I'm going to open another web browser, and let's go to the address. Bing.com, B I N G.com. B I N G.com. Bing is the second biggest search engine at the moment. It has about 20% market share. As I said, Google has about 60 or 65 or so. Um, and you say, well, why would I bother with such a small fry, 20%? This is global search traffic. This is still hundreds of millions of searches globally in its second place. And it's ascending. It is increasing market share. A year ago, they had like 15% market share at the cost of Google. They've lost some market share. And then um, uh, Bing has, has picked it up. Now you might say, okay, well, what about Yahoo? Yahoo's been around since the 90s, the mid-90s. Uh, at the moment, Yahoo has a contract with Bing to, to show results when people search on Yahoo from Bing. So if we optimize for Bing, we're going to be optimizing indirectly anyway for Yahoo. So people that are using Yahoo are also going to get Bing results. So that's why we're going to be targeting to optimize for Google and Bing, because then we'll get trickle-down effect for Yahoo. And yes, there's also AltaVista still around, and AOL Search still has a market share, and all of these other ones have some market share. DuckDuckGo, has anyone heard of that search engine, DuckDuckGo? If you haven't, there's a search engine called DuckDuckGo. 
um, but I don't know its current market share. We can look at all that statistics up, but we'll look at the two big ones. And so as I was saying, the reason we're going to also optimize for Bing is because it's second place, it's ascending, and the fact of the matter is, does anyone here have an iPhone? So Apple had a contract with Google for several years. And when you did a search on your iPhone, you were going to get results from a Google search. Well, that contract expired and was not renewed. Apple instead decided to partner with Microsoft, the creator or the, the people behind Bing. So now by default, search on the iPhone is Bing. You can, of course, change it back to Google if you know what you're doing and it's not complicated. But most people just use their phone search, get the result, go to the restaurant. They're not going to fiddle around in the settings, except for that annoying time when I get that little number that says I have an update. Most people are just going to use their phone because it works. And so by default, more people that have iPhones uh, have Bing search built in. Uh, if you get a brand new Mac, and you've got Safari web browser, that's also going to be getting Bing search built in. If you're going to buy a brand new Windows laptop or desktop computer, well, Windows is a product of Microsoft. Bing is a product of Microsoft. Microsoft is putting Bing as the default engine, search engine, on Windows computers. You can change it, of course. You, you've used Google, you love Google, change it back to Google. No problem. But is grandma going to do that? Um, so this is one of the reasons why it's ascending. Uh, I've got myself a Windows phone. Guess what kind of search engine it has built in? Now, Windows Phone only has 3% global market share, but that's still millions of users. And so it's working. I'll show you websites where you can look at these statistics and other interesting stuff showing the slow decline of Google. Um, not cataclysmically, of course, but slow decline a bit, and then the fast rise of Bing. So that's why we're going to look at both of these search engines and optimize for them. So let's do the exact same search that we did on Google, search for your name, in Bing to compare and contrast results. Before I finish typing, I'm starting to type my name. And notice this result here is already sort of giving me a preview result of perhaps the most famous uh, Victor Campos. So that's one difference there. You might have already noticed other differences. There's a big scary picture of a bee behind the search and then there's little news headlines and such. They're both search engines. They're both trying to give you the best results in different ways. One of the ways is that perhaps one day Google will copy this because the search engines are fighting each other, copying each other. Right now Bing has this and Google doesn't. You get a preview there that might give you the best result before you even do any search. So search your name. This gives me 3 million results compared to 28 and a half million results. Both search engines are searching the same web, the same internet. But each search engine is trying to present the best results because the purpose of the search <coughs> engines for us, the user, is to find the 10 best results, the, the page full of the best results. So each one has a, a goal to give you the best results. The way it finds the best results is the algorithm that each one has, the technique to find those results. So the Bing algorithm and the Google algorithm are similar to some degree and very different to other degree, in other degrees. The results page here, I see pictures also, but they're not the very first line, and I see a couple of different pictures. I see a call-out box on the side also. Over uh, on Bing, it, the information is being pulled from the Internet Movie Database for the actor. First result is the Internet Movie Database, which was also Google. I'll put these side by side. Second result is Victor M. Campos, the, um, the, the doctor with a very bad review. Pictures, um, another movie site a Facebook profile, that's not me, uh, my 
my Southwestern College profile, <laughs> so that one's me. My LinkedIn profile, that one's me. And a Victor Campos, that is not me. So here, I'm getting different results. The same internet is being searched, but different results. Did anyone find in Bing any result that they did not find in Google? Yes. <coughs> people, okay. So that's what we're that's what we're seeing here, hands on. Each of the search engines is trying to show the best results. They have an algorithm that they believe is better than the competition. Now <clears throat> we'll do a, this comparative search. We'll go back to Google. Oh, I forgot to say one thing first. On Bing, uh, do I see any ads? Yeah, they're at the bottom also. Peoplefinder.com and Spokio, and then related searches. Oh, wait, that's Google. Um, any ads in my case on Bing? Um, no ad results in my case. You might have gotten an ad. I don't know, but on my result on Bing, no ads shown at all. Okay, so we'll go back to Google. We'll do another search. This time, let's do a search for your company name. Not the website address and such, but the company name, and spell it in the way that you would be wanting to be found as. So if you don't have your, a company, search anything, but try you know, PMD Interactive, whatever your company is. Search for it as a company name, not as an address. Don't put anything ex extra else extra like a location or a product or anything. Just search your company name. Search your company name in both search engines. So in Google I get 437,000 results. In Bing I get 564,000 results. The very first result is my company's homepage. Well, the end. We have perfect SEO, right? We're number one. This obviously is a skewed search. This is a, just a, th this is a, a trick question search. Obviously, my website is going to be number one if I'm searching for my website. We're going to talk about, of course, finding us under web designers. We'll get to that. I'm just showing you here, this is what Google and Bing know about your website. In my case, there's my company website. It says here, updated June 5th. It has this little call-out text, web marketers who can create the right solution for the right price. We offer everything from social media to human resources. We'll talk about how to edit that, because that's your, that's your best foot forward there. If you searched and now you, you get a result that doesn't look exactly like you thought, we'll talk about editing this. The second result here is our Facebook profile. The third is our Yelp profile. The fourth is Twitter, and then LinkedIn, and then Google Play, one of our apps on Google Play. Our YouTube, our Pinterest, something called Places to Go in Chula Vista. That's a new one to me. <laughs> I haven't seen that one yet. And then our clout. Make a note of this site. Clout.com is a good site that you might want to look into that helps you manage your online presence, its efficiency or its efficacy. Uh, how effective is it? Um, this clout is free. Uh, and it connects to all of your profiles on Facebook and Twitter and all of that. And then it uh, ranks you how well or how effective is your message getting out there with a simple number between 1 and 100. And it'll show you charts and stuff. And so if, you're, if your number, your clout number, your clout score is consistently like 21, uh, and you've tried to do more social media and such, that could be an indicator that your social media isn't being effective. But if you see that clout score go from 21 to 29 after you started to use Twitter more, that's an indication that your social media is working for you. So it's a, it's a form of uh, analytics. Yes? Is this specific to businesses or you know, no. lots of personal? Individuals as well, per people. But uh, the other one, brand yourself, that's more people personal. Yes. 
All right, so comparing the results then with Bing. Number one is PMD Interactive again, our main website. There's the, uh, there's the text, which is slightly different. Uh, but look at this. My result here shows deep links. These are links inside of my website that are in a sub page of my website. Google only showed the top result, the top link of my website, the home page. Bing is showing deep links, such as all of these little blurbs and then request a quote. They sound pretty good. How much do they cost? So directly right there, you can go directly to the request a quote or read the blog or see the portfolio of web development. Google's not showing me that at the moment. So how do you, how do you get deep links to your... It's one of the things we'll be talking about. <laughs> um, the second result is Facebook again. Notice it shows it slightly different though. Uh, Facebook has a mechanism for you also to, to rate <coughs> businesses if you didn't know. There's Yelp of course, but then Facebook has an aspect of, of rating businesses and such. And so Bing is showing the same Facebook profile, but it's showing the rating that we've got on, on, uh, on Facebook. Well, what does it mean when you have a date? You show us that date. Mm -hmm. What does it mean when you have a date or not have a date? Most of the time, the date means when it was last updated, mm -hmm. when, when the blog was last updated or that sort of thing, when, when, when the last changes were applied. So the trade-off here is it's on Bing it's not showing me my last update, but it's showing me these deep links. Bing is showing the last blog post there, but it's not showing any of the deep links. There's the Yelp profile, just like Google. Um, there's our Twitter, just like Google, but on Bing it's showing the um, it's showing the uh, the followers and the number of tweets and so forth. So a little bit more deeper information. There's Google Plus, another social network related searches. There's the LinkedIn, there's Vimeo. It showed Vimeo instead of YouTube. Vimeo, if you didn't know, is another video sharing site. You say, well, why didn't it show YouTube? The algorithm felt that perhaps the Vimeo profile fit better for, for users. And possibly the cynical answer also is that because YouTube is a Google property, Vimeo is not, perhaps Bing showed an alternative to yet another Google property. And then the portfolio. All right, so again, this was a trick question. Uh, if you do have a company and such, you probably will appear number one if you search literally your company name. But people are not going to search that, of course. They're going to search for web designers or human resources or whatever it is that they need. So now, let's do another search. Back to Google. This time, let's search for a simple keyword that your business is about. Uh, it doesn't have to be one word. For example, I'm going to type in web design. Don't go as far as to type in San Diego and you know web design firms you know just go with a simple keyword that would apply to your company or your brand your presence search that simple keyword on both the search engines <clears throat> and let's compare how that works for a moment So if we do a search here with a keyword of your company, Google shows 1.6 uh, billion results, and uh, Bing shows 1.7 billion results. And I'm and my company is nowhere to be found on page one. Let's break down what what we do find, however. There's very ubiquitous or very obvious ads. First of all on the left and the right. After the ads, the ones that are, that are not marked as ad, ads, then we, get the pay per, uh, then we get the organic results. The results that they didn't pay for, 
that they happened organically through various means, which we'll talk about in this class. But the very first organic result is a Yelp result, not even a real web design company. The second one is a real company, uh, B2B uh, or BOP design. The third organic result is a Wikipedia article. What is web design? Then we've got some section here on sort of like, I would say like a, a call out, uh, like a featured businesses call out here. Alonzo Creative, LLC, JF Web Design, Fuel House. Notice some of these results here don't even have the term web design in their name. I'll explain that in a bit also, but I want to get found here. I want to I want to appear here in, instead of everyone down there. Um, <coughs> we'll get to that in detail. But the secret is Google Plus page, Google Plus page, Google Plus page, Google Plus page. They have a page on Google Plus. That's that's that search that social network that you've heard of but never used. You know, you're on Facebook. Your company's on Facebook. Maybe your company's on Twitter. If your company's on Google Plus, because Google is a Google service and Google Search is a Google service. They seem to give precedence to their services. So if you want to get higher than your competitors here, and a Google Plus page is totally free, it might behoove you to look into creating a Google Plus business page. And as luck would have it, I teach a class starting this Friday on social networks, social media, setting up from scratch Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus this Friday. Uh, 9.30 a.m. So remind me at the end of the day and I'll mention it again. But this week starts day one on Friday of the social media class. As I said, I teach a bunch of classes that interrelate with each other. And there's no prerequisites for any of the classes. And it's useful to take as many of them as you can. But if you can't catch it now, it'll come again in a month or two. So you don't have to go to work on Friday morning? Uh, you don't have to go to work. This is my work. Um, Excuse me, can you tell me the difference between Google Plus and the other medias like Twitter? The, there's no big difference in a way. They're all social networks, but they're trying to do it their way. Uh, Twitter's big thing is that it has limitations on how much you can type. It's only 140 characters. Facebook is big and famous. Everyone's on Facebook. Google Plus has the power of all of Google behind it. So they're all social networks, and in that class, we go into details and nuances of each one. The point is, the very short answer is, this is the part of SEM, search engine marketing. What are you doing on your website? SEO. What are you doing outside of your website? SEM. And the short answer is, try to be on as many social networks as possible, because one plus of being on Google Plus is that you could be part of this, you know, featured section. So they have a, a, a government, secure government um, company that they're the web designer, I am, and you can't use Twitter. That's a very specific kind of company. We might have to talk a little bit more individually for your particular, particular needs. So after that, local results there. Uh, what else? Top Web Design, San Diego Branding Agency, jacobtyler.com. And then we've got a spot, in my case, of news. The future of cards and web design. How to, how to learn what users expect from your design. So these are news articles, blog posts. This one updated 17 hours ago, one day ago, eight hours ago. This is a modern search engine result page. It's not just a list of websites that have these basic keywords on the site. If you've learned a little bit of SEO throughout the years, the big thing you used to need to do was to develop your keywords and add your keywords to act your site and worry about keyword density and all of that. For example, the, the keyword web design. In the old days, you know, the ancient days, three years ago, you needed to you then use that keyword all over your site in your website address victorcomposwebdesign.com on your homepage welcome message welcome to victor web design on your headings 
uh, you know, web design page one. You would have to use that keyword over and over and over because that's how the that's how the search engines would tell. Oh, this website's about web design, and then they would rank you. Nowadays, the search engines are smarter. The algorithm has changed, whereas simple keywords on your site like this are not that helpful anymore. We're seeing this <coughs> right here in that. Some of the sites that appear here don't even have the word web design in their in their address or their or their title here. Alonzo Creative LLC. Nowhere there does it say web design, but it's number one in this list here of local local companies. And also, what we're seeing is um, blog content, relevant, timely blog content. Maybe you wrote an amazing blog post about your dog walking company tips and such and when someone is searching that it appears there who cares if it didn't show your home page it's a link to your website when someone then clicks that blog post to read it and learn something and they see this company victorsdogwalking.com maybe then they will get a quote or call us or, or hire us so one of the things we'll talk in detail, of course, is that blogs are an important aspect also of modern SEO. Writing content that people will care about that is timely. If you wrote a blog a year ago, that's not timely. One day ago is timely. 17 hours ago is timely. One month ago is timely. Not 12 months ago. <clears throat> So our search results nowadays are also giving us blog results. So one thing to, to talk about in the class is blogging. And I teach a class on blogging as well. We spend three or four weeks completely on blogging. If you've never blogged before, we brainstorm, we <coughs> give you tips and advice and all of that. I don't know when that next blog, blog class is being offered, probably next month. Um, but look for it in the catalog. A result on Craigslist, and then also a result, I think, over here somewhere. Oh, yeah, Yelp. Uh, here is a result from Yelp of web designers. Just to see what that's about, I'm going to click on that Yelp result. And then now this is giving me uh, results of various uh, businesses, reviews, and such. We're seeing much more of this also on the search engines because there's so many websites out there so much competition out there many of these review sites these ranking sites are also appearing on search because Yelp um, is a place where people go to put positive or negative comments and such people are relying on Yelp much more to separate the the wheat from the chaff and uh, that's not the only one there's a uh, I'll talk about some of our clients my company works with, uh, but we work with a few restaurants, and so obviously Yelp is very big for those restaurants. But Yelp is big for everything. Yelp is big for all, also services, lawyers, and uh, CPAs. You know, everyone's reviewed on Yelp. Uh, how many of you? Uh, ha how many of you have a company that has a Yelp uh, profile? Okay, everyone should be raising their hand because if you didn't create your Yelp profile, someone probably did it for you, and you're probably getting reviews that you don't even know you're getting. So as a business owner, you want to claim your Yelp profile, even if you are, you know, a cake baker, uh, one of those bouncy house rental places. You might already have a Yelp profile that someone created to give you that bad review. Sometimes people are more apt to, do, to go negative. So you don't have to admit to it, but you probably have gone to Yelp to put a bad review of a restaurant because they were slow. But how many times, conversely, do you go and rush to Yelp to give him a good review. You had such a good time you forgot to give him a good review. But you had such a bad time you're not going to forget to give him a bad review. And that's the case for lots and lots of people all over the world, all over the city, all over this block. So the point is here, one of the things to think about SEM wise is to also have a presence on the review sites like Yelp, like TripAdvisor, like Kudzu, like Angie's List, and on and on. All of these review sites that are so specific there's one that I'm blanking on the name at the moment. It's about neighborhoods. It ranks the neighborhoods around you. So if you're going to move into a brand new place, you can look that up on this review site, and it'll tell you, don't move there. It's full of crazy people. Go back to the Alonzo. 
you just hover over Alonzo, mm -hmm. it opened up. Yeah, but when I scroll down a bit, then it kind of pulls out over here. There. Mm -hmm. well, how do you get that? Is that something? Is it that's related. Or? That's related to the Google Plus page. If you claim your Google Plus page, you will then be able to add your photos, confirm your address, you know, edit your phone information and all of that, so that it shows up when you when you appear there. <coughs> and I also want to appear as a little dot on a map here, um, my business, and that's because this is showing you a Google map of results of businesses and that also the way to appear on that is you've got a Google Plus profile. So how many of you had heard of Google Plus before this class? And how many of you have used Google Plus before this class? Okay, so that's one of the reasons why you want to uh, know about it and use it and in the social media class we go in there into detail on, on how to use social media for your business. In that class, I'm not going to teach you how to send a message to, to grandma. I'm going to show you how to use social media for your business. I believe it's even in the title. So how to set up a profile, a business profile on Facebook, how to set up a business Twitter account, a Google Plus business account, and other social networks. There's part one and part two. I'm going to then contrast that with, let's see what my Bing results looked like for web design, uh, web design, expert web designers, it's an ad. So I'm going to skip that, skip that ad, there's another ad, skip that, and then we've got sandywebdesign.com, webage.com, swsupport.com, they're about web design and graphic design and marketing, and all of these have this little blurb here, Google Web Designer. So, see, we're getting different results here. These, in my case, seem to be much more focused on the actual companies, whereas Google has a mishmash of some blogs here and a Yelp thing there and just kind of different types of things. And for, for some people, this will work really well for them and they'll find what they need with these results. And for some people, and like I'm saying, 20% market share, these results are way better for them. I'm going to click right away on WebEdge based on this. As a member of the San Diego community, we strive to help businesses and medical offices bring their uniqueness to the web. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I have a medical practice. So a medical-oriented web designer is what I need. Not just one that's about small businesses. So crafting this message, because you have seconds to make an impression, crafting this message is also something we'll be talking about. The Wikipedia article there again, and then results and ads and so forth. <clears throat> Now this type of search emphasizes the, the old style of SEO, the one that was heavily focused on keywords. We're going to be talking in this class, and we're going to take a break, of, a break very soon, we're going to talk about what would be known as the long tail keyword strategy. So that's when we are more specific. That's the next kind of search we'll do in a moment. But it's a good time for a break. Usually we take a break at about every hour. 10 minutes. Um, so we'll take our break, 717. We'll be back at 727. I'll turn the printer on if you'd like to print the syllabus. And uh, you want to confirm that you've enrolled in the class and that you've signed in. We'll be back at 727. If you have any questions, call me over.